Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about a recent change uh, that NASBA has announced regarding the CPA exam. Now, we did previously talk about the exposure draft uh, that had originally talked about extending the 18-month period to sit and pass the CPA exam to a originally 24-month period. However, uh, the board of directors decided to go a little bit of a different route. Um, so they had over 850 respondents uh, as a result of this with a wide variety of backgrounds. Uh, and based on the feedback, uh, they made some changes. So a little bit of history around the computerized exam. Uh, I am one of the last groups to ever take the pen and paper exam. So I sat for the pen and paper exam in November of 2003, uh, and they literally gave us a pencil that said, this is your last pencil because they were moving from the pen and paper exam to the computerized exam. And that started in early 2004. Uh, and so I've never taken the computerized CPA exam. Obviously, I know a lot about it, but uh, not ever had the opportunity to take one. Um, and when they started in 2004, the candidates had 18 months from the date of passing the first section to complete the remaining three sections. And there are 55 jurisdictions. Uh, so we have 50 states plus obviously the District of Columbia and other territories that have the ability to uh, proctor and administer the CPA exam. All 55 of those uh, states and territories have adopted that rule. And so for 20 years now, almost, uh, we have been using this 18-month window uh, as we go through. However, many things have happened recently, COVID probably being one of the bigger ones where people couldn't sit for the exam for a period of time. They were uh, having their time lapsed. Uh, and so disruptions from the pandemic mixed in, obviously, with a big pipeline issue that we're all very aware of. Uh, people have indicated that maybe it takes a little bit more than 18 months to do so. And so on April 21st of 2023, the NASBA board did vote to amend uh, Rule 5-7, uh, and it increases the length of time for your conditional credit from 18 months to 30 months. Uh, and that's a pretty big deal. Um, so that is a significant increase uh, from the 18 month window today. So adding basically 12 additional months to do so. And it bases the calculation on of the conditional credit based on the date that the scores are released. So instead of using the date that you sat for the exam, it takes a little bit of time from the day you sit for the exam for the scores to be announced. And so as a result, with the movement in January of 2024 to the new CPA exam as part of CPA evolution uh, on January 1st of 2024, we're going to start with a new exam uh, and we're going to go to the core plus discipline approach, which we've talked about on the blog before. Uh, they wanted to give a little bit more time to people who it may take longer to grade because anytime something's new, they need a little bit of time to kind of work out the case. And so as a result, um, this would also be a benefit. So not only you're not worried about the day you sat, but it's the day that the score is released. Now, here's the key. It's not done uh, because this is just changing the model rule. The model rule is just that it's a model. The UAA model rules have no effect on actual state board rules. And so all 55 U.S. Board of Accountancies now have to go and consider the amendment and choose to commence a process to change the rules at the state level. So we are far from done on this. Uh, every state is going to have to decide how they're going to uh, do this. And so if you're a current candidate, um, unfortunately, despite the fact that the model rule has changed, you are under the existing rule until your state decides to make changes to it. Uh, and so again, this is going to take 55 of them uh, to go through and make changes to the length of time. So again, NASBA um, focuses on writing the rules, but then each jurisdiction decides how candidates uh, ultimately get licensed, right? They decide the education requirements, they decide uh, the processes. And so that's all done by the state boards of accountancy. So as a result, uh, this is something Thing that we uh, are going to have to monitor. So whatever state you're in, you should be talking to your state board of accountancy and your state society and see where they stand on this process. Uh, because if we want to retain students in the profession and we want kids to become CPAs, we need to support them through this process. All right. So it was a pleasure chatting with you guys on changes to the CPA exam. Hopefully, uh, if you have any staff or other uh, you know, people who work for you who this impacts, you can let them know. They probably have heard because they're usually the first to know uh, with social media, etc. But I want to thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye bye.